blender is what I call it and I make it very simple for you and all you need for this painting are your primary colors red yellow and blue and um, ultramarine blue cad red cad yellow you need white and black burnt umber maybe some burnt sienna pretty it is look and the brushes you need are only the um, chiseled edge brush the one inch and we need a liner brush and we need a fan brush see how nice and long the handle is that way you can stand away from your painting further away and you can work a little further it's kind of nice to have the long handle brushes and I have a flat chiseled edge brush synthetic and I have another smaller bristle brush that's size 8 and I may use a sea sponge I'm not sure make some flowers and that's about it for this painting see how pretty it is look at those flowers I'll show you what brush I used for those flowers now okay I'll show you different brushes that you can use for the waterfalls and for those flowers look they're so pretty so simple my techniques are very simple and I'll be showing you all that so let's get started so let's put on a really nice sky nice blue sky I'm just using my bristle brush I'm gonna make a bit of blue and white just get a background blue just to get us started we'll put some other things there there we go back and forth some more a bit of blue nice shadow Darken up a little bit so you can see it. As we come down, we get lighter. There we go. Let's go back and forth. Nice and light on the bottom there. Just take your bristle brush again and we'll put some background trees there. I'm going to try some burnt sienna and some dark green. nice dark green greenish color trees in the background here so I'm just gonna make some bushes sort of not fir trees just some kind of tree some kind of background there we go just tap 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 there we go get a few little tops there We'll just go right across. There we go. See 
So it gives it the illusion of trees and bushes. There we go. Just tap away as you can hear. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. That's just burnt sienna and sap green. Some nice little bushes in the background. See? So simple, isn't it? So let's take our tape off. And that's pretty already. Let's put our tape back on a little further down. Just so we can establish something here, right here, the mess I'm making. Right there, and let's take our flat chiseled edge brush, and we'll put a really dark blue, ultramarine blue, put that there, because we want the falls to fall down this way, so we have to have something back here. So we'll just get something in here, a nice blue water. There we go. Just filling it in with the dark blue. Now. Right, so just get that done first. Try to get backgrounds done first and then you can put everything on top. Now, here we go. So while we get our tape on, pick up some white on your dirty brush. It's your chiseled edge brush. And put some streaks of water. Now you want to keep some of the blue. Just put some streaks of white in there. If you lose it, we can always put some blue back in. Just little streaks. Short strokes. Short strokes. That gives us the illusion of water. Now, just leave that there for now. Now, let's take the tape off again. See, that helps keep everything in place. And down here, maybe we'll put the tape on again. Why not? So we get some idea of where we want to put and our, let's see, let's see, maybe out here. Don't be too crooked. There we go. And now take your chiseled edge brush again. And what we're going to do is we're going to paint that whole bottom there black. Oops, okay, well that's okay. You can put tape up there again if you wanted to. But that's going to be a little crooked anyway with some rocks and stuff, so. So we'll just put pure black down here for now. Just use whatever black you have. Make your own black with ultramarine blue and burnt umber if you like. But this is just a background, so it's going to be covered up a lot. So, if I was using black for a main subject, 
I would add other colors to it or I'd make my own black to have some color in it because black gets pretty flat and flattens out your painting and your colors. So it's okay to use the black for a background. Or some really dark uh, parts of a painting where you can't get a really dark color. Sometimes trees, you look at nature and it's so dark, it almost looks pure black. Now we got this part. See, we're doing another background. See how I do backgrounds first and then I put everything on top? Makes it so much easier. Now, now there we go. Now you got that much done. Now get your chisel edge brush again and make sure all that old black is off of it, most of it anyway. And if that don't, you can't get that clean, just get another brush, another chisel edge. So I'm going to make a little bit of a purplish color right here. Purple. Purple, so I'm more on the blue side. A little bit of white to that and I'll bring it up a bit. Okay. Still want it a bit dark. So with your chiseled edge, just paint these strokes like, like that. All right. Just make strokes. Make sure you can see this. For example, I'll add a little bit more white to mine too. I want to darken it up a little bit up here, but uh, I want you to be able to see it. Here I go. Just straight across, horizontal. So you, if you're right-handed, you might want to start over here. Horizontal strokes. Lighten it up for you. And don't come straight across and have straight lines. Like do one. Say so you do one here. And do one under here and over here and under here. So just do them staggered horizontally. There we go. We're putting them more. Now let's take our tape off again. And this time we will do some water down here. We'll while we're waiting for all that to dry. So we can take our fan brush and we'll take some blue. Take some blue and some green. Take some blue and green. Some white. More on the blue side. So a nice paler blue than that. So we got this color blue and I just put uh, more blue than green, a bit of white. I got that color. There we go. Let's put that on with the fan brush. You can put it on with a flat brush if you like. There we go. Yeah, 
Yeah, whatever brush you got handy. Good. There we go. Let's get all that down here. So we just want to get our colors on first before we really get into the details and bring it out to a really nice, beautiful painting. Good. So now we'll start. We'll clean up the sky. So let's see what we want to do with the sky. I just got a flat bristle brush. It's almost like a filbert being used flat. And I'm going to clean up the sky. So what am I going to do with this? Let's see. We'll think now how nice that would look with some nice clouds. Soft. We'll get a nice uh, undercoating. Underpainting. Wipe it off your tissue is too much. We're just going to make our little circles that we usually make. All right, so just make some circles because we want to clean it up to make it nice and soft. All right, get those streaks out. of If you end up getting streaks, just make circles. Good. Pick up some paint if you need it. We'll make some nice little clouds up here. So clean up the sky. Now you might say, well, why don't you just do that in the first place? Well, I find that if I get all my background on first, it will help me decide what I want to do with it. I may not want to do this. You know, I may not want to put those kind of clouds. I might want something different. So, like I say, making paintings. You're making all kinds of decisions. Now you might be going by a, you might even go by a reference photo. And uh, sometimes I go with, by several re reference photos. I'll pick different things out of each one and pick some stuff out and put them into the painting. So now I'm going to go with some white, just white instead of blue some spots that I want to have a nice little clouds. Don't really want too much cloud coverage but I'm gonna put on some nice fluffiness going on in the sky. A little white, wipe my brush off a little bit, pick a spot. So just move it around little circles, just move it around. See how pretty they are? Just by adding a little bit of white, you've got some paint on there that's still wet, so that will blend in with it. I move away and then I move down underneath. Kind of move everywhere and then you get some nice fluffy clouds. I'm not sure about that one there. What do you think? Move that around a little bit. There we go. There we go. See? So, maybe just some down here. See, all you do is make little circles. That's it. You can have more if you want, or you can, you know, whatever you think you would like. That's the trick. See how pretty there? 
now. So from a streaky old sky, just nice pretty clouds. Now let's work on, let's see, the top of the water there maybe. Make sure this is dry before you do your waterfalls because it'll blend in with your black paint and it won't look very nice. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I'm going to get some white. Now mine is a bit wet there. Uh, I'm going to get some white and I'm going to decide where I want my waterfalls to come. So I'm going to have some little waterfalls here and here. I'm going to have it all cross those rocks, okay? So what I'm going to do is get my fan brush again. And if you don't have a fan brush, just use a flat chisel edge brush. I'm going to put some white on here and add a little tiny bit of purple. Just to give it some color. A little more white. There we go. Now let's see, let's see. We'll take some water up here. This is coming down. So we'll come over. We'll make a decision. Bring a nice bit of paint down. No, 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 no. Let's come down closer. Closer here. Yeah. And down. Now, I said it was a ledge there. So when we get to the ledge, then we will have to touch over and down again. Gently. Yep. So you want to get some more water here, close to the edge. And down. Touch over and down. Right, so might need more. Might have to go over this a couple of times. That's okay. Over here and down. See already it looks pretty. Might need a little bit more over here to even up with this one. Nice. Now, let's keep this going. A little more purple. So we got some more, let's see, let's see, we got this one here, and then we might come over a little further. Bring another one down here. And maybe it's get, get to the edge and pull down. Maybe there's another edge. So every time you see an edge, you just pull over and down. It gives it a, an illusion of, of it breaking up. Okay. Maybe we have another one over here. Maybe it's a ledge. See little ledges, how cute they are, and they make it look different. I'm going to darken up my paint a little bit just so I can. Maybe it's darker over here. Let's get another one. Let's see, let's see. Over here and down. I'm using a corner brush here to get that little that little one. Just use the corner of your brush. Couple on the ledge. Now that's that part. We can have more if you want them. You can, if you feel it's too separated, you can put a couple of smaller ones inside. Just use the corner of your brush just to get get a smaller one. All right. So it just falls down over the ledge. A little bit different than what I usually do, but I'm trying to make some different videos for you so you can see different ways of doing uh, 
different things like waterfalls or clouds, grass. So this one here, I'm going to use the corner of my brush again. Good. And that one is probably, that can fall right down if you want. And maybe There's an element here. A match. See how pretty that is? So you want to come down a little further to get into the water. There we go. Good, because you want to have some water going on down here. So we'll just put on a little streak of water going over here for now. All right. That looks good. And like I say, you can have as much as you want. You just go start at the top and turn your brush on the corner. That way you'll get little waterfalls instead of, you know, big one, right? Good. All right, so you get that much start it up on top here a little bit of white will make this a little prettier so we'll just put some white in here just streaks away try to keep your blue try to keep some blue i should say okay Move it around so that you can keep some of your blue. Mix that in with your, as if it's falling over. Just bring it all together. See, that looks like it's got water up there and Things going on, little trees in the background. All right, now we'll put some shimmer on the water from the waterfalls and we'll put white on our brush, or our fan brush. Wipe some of it off in your tissue. So it's not as much on there. If you don't want too much on there, you'll get big blobs, okay? Now, if this is still wet, that's a good thing because then it will mix and it won't be too blobby. That's a funny word. So you put on streaks by putting your brush vertical and pull it, across, pull it across and pull it across and then pull across. That will give you reflections from your water and it will make your water shimmer. See, there we go. Pretty. Good. Some more over here, and here, and here. And that will leave that side a little dark. We need more here. We can put it in again after. And the paint is wet. It usually blends in with it, but we don't want it too white, too chalky, right? So it's good to have a little bit of. Good. And wipe off your brush and whatever is left over on your brush you can come across here. I'm not pushing very hard. So that gives a nice little, nice little shimmer to your water. And like I said, if you want more there, we can do that again after. But right now I'm just going to just put that on there. Now we got that little shimmer done. Good. And wipe off your brush and whatever's left over on your brush, you can come across here. All 
I'm not pushing very hard. So that gives a nice little, nice little shimmer to your water. And like I said, if you want more there, we can do that again after. But right now I'm just going to just put that on there. Now we got that little shimmer down. Good. So now we can put on some, some rocks or something down here just to put on something nice and get something started. So I'm just going to put black just so I can see the rocks. And I'm going to put a big old rock right here. Okay. I'll just bring it down here. So just a straight line and a hump. And fill it in with black. So let's fill it in. We'll get some humps or something there. There we go. Make it a bit humpy. Just straight line down here is fine. We'll humpy out here if you want. See? That's one rock. And maybe we'll put another rock over here. Maybe one further down, right down into the bottom of the canvas. Okay, we got that one. It'd be nice to have something up here probably for some flowers or something to sit on. I'm just going to get a bumpy edge there and maybe, yeah, there we go. You make your hump and make your bumps after. Just trying to see where I'm going with this. All right, so there we go. And out. Let's separate those two. And I think that should do it. Maybe a small one over here. You put them wherever you want. Put them wherever you want your rocks, however many, many you want. Rocks are nice. They give a nice little touch. There's one right here. Maybe, maybe, maybe another little one here. There we go. I think I need something else. Let's see, let's see. Okay. So, so, our rocks. One here and here, here, here. Here, here, here. Where else do you think it'd be nice? Maybe another one over here. Not too many. We want to... Kind of nice, though. There we go. So some simple little rocks. Rocks everywhere. There we go. Now we'll highlight those when they dry a little bit. Now I like using my fan brush to highlight my rocks and I like using a flat chiseled edge brush and I'll use, I like to use a palette knife. So let's try this first fan brush. And I'm going to pick up, let me see, let me see, I really like this burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is a really nice color. A bit of yellow. You can make your own burnt sienna, just you can put brown or uh, burnt umber, yellow and red together, a little bit of white, and you got your burnt sienna. Okay, so, but it's nice to have some, some of your paints mixed, pre-mixed, because that way you don't have to be spending all day mixing your paints, but mixing your own paints, so you can get some really nice colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let me see, let me see, I'm going to start at the top, and I'm going to come down the corner of my brush and just drag on Drag that on there, the corner of my brush. And I'm going to take the, and I'm going to, like, I want to keep the black. I'm going to take this top part here and I'm going to drag on some more. Let's see how I'm skipping over areas. See, I'm skipping over. Good. Maybe I'll start a new area right here. And I'll skip over and I'll just drag on some paint. Okay. 
as long as you keep black or keep your dark you'll be okay now if you end up putting on too much you just put your lines back in there your your cracks right we'll highlight that again now after see how the highlights come out really nice see that this one here we can keep using the fan brush it's a little closer to us so it can be bright but see all those humps see those humps now those humps will help you get your rock uh, in sh uh, different shapes of your rock so use that hump up there that little hump you can see that background hump here start at the edge of that and pull down again pull down from that from that there now if you got if your paint is wet you'll probably mix in with the black and you won't be able to see it very well but i'm going to keep continuing mine is wet so there we go see how it's shaping up already see all right i'm adding a little more yellow to my burnt sienna just to brighten it up for you take the corner of my brush starting at the top and pulling down there we go looking for little humps see down here so look for your little humps right there and here there's some in here you almost have to use your imagination at times too don't always be in front of you but I find a fan brush is really good I've used many brushes for uh, shaping up rocks and I found some were really difficult but I find a fan brush and the uh, see how I'm just skipping over those dark parts right and then I pull down a bit I can pull straight down if you want start another new section and then you can we don't want the bottom part to be uh, we don't want to lose our color our black let's put a little bit down here we don't want too much down there see how that shaped it up really nice see that because I left the darks I left the darks. Now, I'm going to use my fan brush one more time on this flat rock here, okay? Just so I can show you. So, I'm going to start at the very top. And I'm going to pull out straight over. That'll make that look like a flat rock see I didn't do much with that at all just sort of on the top so let's try our flat chisel edge brush and see what we can get out of that so with our with our flat chiseled edge brush let's try this little rock down here so use the same color if you want all right and same thing just find the top pull in make sure you just keep Okay, so that's the chiseled edge brush. Now we're going to take our palette knife. Just so I can show you how to use your palette knife on a rock. 